I am still shaking from watching this week's episode of The Mandalorian. It was by far the shortest episode done to date, clocking in at under 30 minutes, but a lot happened, so let's get right into it. Chapter 11. The Heiress. Originally aired on November 13th and was directed by Bryce Dallas Howard. The episode starts out with a shot of the Razor Crest beaten up and limping her way into a star system. Mando and his party are forced to crash land the ship on this water moon of Trask and almost nail the landing, but an engine blows out on the pad and they fall into the sea. We get an awesome visual of the crest being hoisted out by what looks like some sort of of an at-at Imperial walker. The imps seem to have some sort of presence on this planet, but more on that later. I love this planet design with it being this whole fallout far harbor kind of vibe with fishing nets harpoons and barnacles you could really feel the humidity and the fishy stench of this dock visually mon calamarians quarians frog people all coexisting on a giant floating ocean in space mando completes his side mission and delivers the frog lady and her eggs to her mate the frog daddy points Mandel to a cantina where he can acquire more info on his main quest, and he notices a one shrouded woman off in a corner, but she quickly disappears. In this bar, Mando is met by a quarian who tells him that he can bring him to find other Mandalorians. Something I also notice about the child is he keeps trying to form words in what sounds more like than baby speech. It's usually just here and there, but I'm noticing he's trying to say more than just like cooing and baby sounds. It might just be me, or he might actually be developing some sort of like, like vocal sort of speech here. So we'll see where that goes. They hop into a Quarian Deadliest Catch episode, and before you know it, Baby Yoda gets yeeted into a water sarlacc pit where it gets eaten. I was not expecting this at all. I legit gasped and yelled here, Anything that happens to the child, like, physically, where some harm comes to him, besides maybe some, like, cutesy thing that jumps on his face, has me terrified. Mando jumps in after him, but he, he gets locked in there with the beast. The Quarians are after the Bezcar the whole time. Every episode has random gangs trying to gank Mando for his armor, I guess. Um, I'm going to lose trust in the next random species that they introduce, because at this point, anyone and everyone is trying to get that exquisite Bezcar armor. And then it happens. Another Mandalorian flies down and starts wrecking these Quarians. Wait, there's another one? And another one? This fight scene was amazing. They ended up saving the kid from the sea serpent and then hand him back to Mando. He begins to explain his quest to, to them. And then boom, Bo-Katan in the flesh, the one and only. Katie Sackoff, voice, voice actress turned live action star. I knew it was her the second I saw her. I legit started to cry here. The bridging of the Clone Wars series and live-action Star Wars is really pulling on my heartstrings here, and we haven't even made it to the meat of the batting order yet. Oh, and Sasha is actually a Mando too, along with some other British guy. Bo explains to Mando who she is, the sister of the Duchess Satine, and is also the heir to the throne of Mandalore. Mando goes on about the way and doesn't believe there are actually Mandalorians because they remove their helmet and reveal themselves, you know? They reveal that Mando himself is actually a member of the Watch, or the Death Watch to be exact, an extremist zealot group from Mandalore. Yes, that very Death Watch from Clone Wars. There was so much going on in this episode, I had to rewatch it several times before making this video to make sure I covered all important plot points and references. After Mando dishes them to go back to the mainland, Bo and them nuke the barge from orbit, but it isn't long till they meet up again. The Quarian fishermen try to jump Mando, but Bo and them shoot these dudes up before Mando can even pull his blaster out. They head back to the bar together and explain to Mando that they can help with his quest trying to find the Jedi, but on one condition. A side mission. This is a running theme in every episode now that Mando will be roped into some sort of silly side quest to get one step closer to his main quest. But I like it. It's like a video game. She explains to him that they are going to hijack an Imperial cruiser to commandeer its cargo of weapons. Mando agrees to it and cue the final act. The Mandalorians soar in on their jetpacks and proceed to kill every stormtrooper on their way to the main bridge of this ship. I love this whole part and the way it was shot. It was a lot of third person over the shoulder from both imps and mandos. It made, made it feel like you were really in the tight corridor and these, with this close quarter sort of fire, firefighting. There was also another OG Star Wars reference to episode four, A New Hope, 
When one of the scared imps panics and yells at a trooper to close all the doors, it's very a la C-3PO to R2 when attempting to save Luke, Han, Leia, and Chewie in the Death Star trash compactor. Mando quickly realizes that he's been okie-doked and Bo changes the deal. They're actually there for something more than just weapons, a certain heirloom that, that she needs to retake and rule Mandalore with. Moff Gideon shows up in a hollow call and basically tells the imps there's nothing more that they can do for them. So the officer kills the two pilots and takes the cruiser into a suicide nosedive. It's not looking good for our armored heroes. Whatever will they do? Mando's got it. Much like the crate Dragon YOLO, he decides to tank all the blaster fire and throw two mines at the troopers to clear the way. He's so brave. I feel like Mando kept playing a second fiddle to them, so this was kind of his, like, uh, redemption or, like, showing his bravery as, like, a Mandalorian to them. So I really like this part. They storm the cockpit and manage to pull the ship up before it crash lands into the sea. Bo grabs the officer at knife point and demands to know where the Darksaber is. Yes, the legendary Darksaber, wielded by many of our favorite Clone Wars and Rebel TV show characters, but now possessed by Moff Gideon. The officer kills himself in what looks like an electrical pill or tooth implant. Nice touch, Favreau. Before Mando departs from the others, bo gives Mando his next lead for his quest. She tells him to go to the forest world of Corvos to meet someone named Ahsoka Tano. Um, what? The Ahsoka Tano? Did you just mention my most favorite Star Wars character in all of Star Wars? I gasped. I literally gasped and started convulsing at this part, like, and rocking in my chair crying. I had to stop the episode to catch my breath to watch the next, like, last five minutes. We're going to get a live action Ahsoka Tano. This is amazing. Will it be in the next episode? Will it even be this season? This episode managed to top the Crate Dragon episode 9 premiere. Balls to the walls action and a ton of lore. Also, Bryce Dallas How Howard and Katie Sackoff did an amazing job with Bo Katan depicting her as a total badass. I give the episode a 9.5 out of 10. I'm really looking forward to next week's episode, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I drop these every Friday and also stream on Twitch four days a week. And if you want to talk more Star Wars, I'll put it in the link description below, and I'll see you next week.